Tonight, Dick Durbin pushes for change at NIU. We'll tell you what he wants. Is Sycamore considering a medical marijuana dispensary? We have the story and the latest on tornado cleanup in Fairdale. NTC News Tonight starts right now. You're watching NTC News, DeKalb County's only television news source on the campus of Northern Illinois University and from the Northern Television Center. This is NTC News Tonight. Illinois Senator Dick Durbin is calling for new funding in NIU's Science Department. Durbin was part of a panel this past week on campus. Good evening, I'm Christina Lind and thanks for joining us. And I'm Carolyn Budvillis. Why wait till you're out of college to innovate and change the world? Elmily Neely tells us about Senator Dick Durbin's plan to get more money for research at NIU. Here at Altgeld Hall, Senator Dick Durbin is getting ready to discuss federal funding for research. Senator Durbin is working alongside President Baker and NIU professors to see how NIU could get more money for research. Durbin supports two pieces of legislation that could help his cause, the American Innovation Act and the American Cures Act. These acts could provide stable funding for some of America's top research agencies, agencies that give money so that students like these can study different types of cancer. That's the big goal is to, to cure diseases. So, you know, we're living longer, living more fulfilled lives. I think that comes from research and, um, you know, what scientists have done in the past. More funding could help them do more research now instead of waiting until after graduation. Sometimes the solutions and cures come from areas of research you never dreamed of. Cures that scientists dream up today will affect our future. Today's college students will soon be our doctors, scientists, innovators. Young people are always the innovators. There's no such thing as old innovators. So the, the young people are where all the bright new ideas are, and that's because they think differently. Maybe a new approach to research funding is just what America needs. Senator Durbin thinks so. Senator Durbin hopes to make big strides in legislation by the end of the year, but for now, we'll just have to wait and see. At Altgeld Hall, I'm Emily Neely, NTC News. Thanks, Emily. Well, speaking of money, Parks and DeKalb are getting an $8.5 million makeover. The budget includes more than $1 million in capital spending. The spending will go towards repairing maintenance facilities and local parks. The makeover plans include Katz Park, but does not include Hopkins Park. After the spending, the total fund balance will still be over $2 million. The possibility of medical marijuana being sold in Sycamore is one step closer to being approved. The Sycamore Planning Commission has looked at two applications for places to set up a marijuana dispensary. They unanimously recommended a location on a gateway drive in an area where other medical services are already available. City Council still has to review the recommendations. And of course, nothing can take effect unless the state approves the use of medical marijuana. Relief efforts for the residents of Fairdale continue today in the Kirkland and Rochelle areas. Members of the American Red Cross are stationed at the First Lutheran Church in Kirkland. Several relief agencies are housed at the church to provide assistance to victims. DeKalb County Sheriff Roger Scott was at the fire department in Kirkland to give an update on the next phase of relief. Today we're making significant progress. Uh, electricity came back to 13 homes overnight in Fairdale, uh, and then the rest of the town will be uh, where, where it can be safe to do so and have been inspected will be uh, returned to power uh, as we're speaking now. Phenom Soup will hold an all-you-can-eat pasta bar this week in effort to raise money for the victims of Thursday's tornado. The pasta bar will be held at Phenom Soup's new location on Lincoln Highway starting tomorrow up until Sunday. All proceeds from the pasta bar will go to Kirkland Community Fire Department. Tickets are available now on the group's website for eight bucks. Uh, this is our first event at our new location, 251 East Lincoln. Uh, so it's a good opportunity for people from the community to not only see uh, our new place, but to uh, help a community that is desperately in need of some help. Authorities made an unusual discovery within the rubble of a Fairdale house that was destroyed by Thursday's tornadoes. A live monkey was found contained inside the house, unharmed but very mean, according to authorities. The monkey has since settled down, but the status of the monkey is unknown. The Sycamore Water Department has begun flushing the city's fire hydrants. The annual spring cleaning of the city's waterways will last over the next nine days. 
The flushing is used to clean out the city's water supply from the sediment that accumulates of the winter months. Residents of the area may experience discoloration during the flushing. University libraries will host a Food for Fines Fee Forgiveness program for all NIU undergraduate and graduate students. Each non-perishable item donated to the library will be worth $1 off library fines and fees and up to $20 per student. The program began running on Monday and stretches out till the end of the month. Food trucks are something you're likely to see in a big city like Chicago. But out here in DeKalb, well, guess what? We just got our own doghouse. Ray Bolanos tells us how DeKalb is getting, getting its own taste of a Chicago lifestyle. I'm here at the Community University Bog Party where the doghouse, NIU's first ever food truck, is serving gourmet grilled cheese and it seems like it's a packed house right now. The doghouse is an NIU alumni owned food truck. The food truck was successfully funded after their Kickstarter campaign reached their goal of $20,000. That goal was reached with some help by social media. Uh, Facebook, actually. I think I follow Jordan and you know, NIU, obviously, and they talked about it a lot on Facebook. Guests were able to pick from a variety of grilled cheese options. The line proves people are willing to wait. The food that you can get at the doghouse is not the only food you can get here at the Community University Bog Party, but I'm actually eating on some Dippin' Dots I got earlier. The vendors like Dippin' Dots are not year-round, someone likes more options for food on campus. Oh, I, th I think it's a wonderful idea, and I think there's a large market for it here and on campus. I think the more alternatives we can offer to our students, the better. I think it's a really good idea. The Dog House food truck is a beacon of change as NIU continues to transform the campus, something the Dog House would like to be a part of. Initially, we plan on starting out and, you know, taking those smaller steps, you know, showing up on weekends to really you know, generate more buzz and then eventually become a part of the NIU identity. The Dark House food truck here at the Community University block party is still experiencing very long wait lines, as you can see behind me. If service like this is good at just one event, maybe food trucks here at NIU's campus might have a future. In the Calb for NTC News, I'm Ray Bolanos. And if the response is good, they're talking about expanding the doghouse into three separate trucks to cover several spots across campus next year. Before we go any further, let's chat with our own Brittany Merlot. They say April showers bring May flowers, so I suppose we should expect some more rain? Well, we have a slight chance tonight, but it's going to be mostly centered off to the east. Uh, we're going to see temperatures going up into the 70s tomorrow. Um, Rockford and DeKalb and Kankakee are going to see upper 60s and Chicago might only get into the 50s tomorrow but again we just have a slight chance for showers most of them will be off to the east so for more on our spring-like weather stay tuned so good to see you guys <laughs> so what's up oh we finally bought a place holy cow you seriously have enough save to do that we've been putting a little aside each month mm -hmm. jeez at the end of the month we have nothing left to save yeah i have no idea where it goes well you're mm -hmm. spending a lot on mm -hmm. is it good oh god oh how is my account overdrawn when it comes to financial stability don't get left behind get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org Welcome back. I hope you got to go outside and enjoy today. I took a walk out and saw some beautiful flowers starting to pop up. It's definitely spring out there and it sure feels like it. We're hitting temperatures up into 66 degrees today. It's great. And look at these beautiful skies. Clouds are starting to build, but it has been a beautiful day here in DeKalb. Now, as these clouds are going to build, they're going to continue throughout the, tonight and into Thursday. We're going to see some cloudy skies and into Friday. Thankfully, those are going to push off to the east and we're going to see a clearing. It's going to be beautiful out there, and we're going to have this warm, moist air pushing from the Gulf up to us, so it'll be up into the 70s as well. So now this weekend, we are going to have some rain building off to the west, and as that pushes towards us, we have a possibility of some rain Saturday night, Sunday, and into Sunday night. We'll 
And then as we pick it back into Wednesday, we're going to see mostly cloudy skies. Those, cl those clouds are going to start to build. As I said, they're going to continue throughout the night, and we're going to see a low of 43 degrees with a slight chance of showers. But like I said, most of those are going to be off to the east. And tomorrow, now the clouds are going to start to push away. We'll see partly cloudy skies to sunny skies with a high of 65 degrees. It's going to be a nice day to go out and enjoy the day again. So then Thursday night, Beautiful, clear, low of 45. One of those great nights to just open the window, enjoy the weather, get that fresh air in. It's going to be beautiful out there. Now, for my five-day forecast, again, 65 degrees as those clouds are going to start to clear. 72 on Friday. It's going to be beautiful. Enjoy the weekend. As Saturday dips down, about 9 degrees down into the lower 60s, but it's still beautiful out. Go camping, play some sports, get outside. Because Sunday and into Monday, we're going to see a possibility of some showers as a cold front pushes through, dropping us down to just the upper 50s. Now that's it for weather. Let's send it back to the desk. Thank you, Brittany. While the focus is on Fairdo, Rochelle has damage from the tornado as well. The restaurant Grub Stakers was completely destroyed by the tornado last week. Efforts have been made to clean up some of the damage, but there is still a lot of work to be done in the cleanup process. Broken buildings, cars, and trees remain on the property. Rochelle has opened up a multi-resource at the Beacon on the Green in Rochelle. The resource center is open until 8 p.m. tonight. One person who spent countless hours last, since last week going over how this massive tornado developed is our own NIU meteorologist, Gilbert Sebensti. Is it fair to call you a storm chaser? And what does that actually mean? <laughs> I think it's pretty fair to call me a uh, storm chaser. I'm uh, one that chases storms, but I do it not because I'm a thrill seeker. I do it for a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, part of my duties here at NIU is to make sure that uh, the campus is safe uh, from tornadoes and to do that they need to be alerted and to be able to be able to know what's going on I have to get out there and watch and see what that storm is doing and uh, certainly that was pretty crazy uh, last Thursday when that happened I was chasing west of uh, Malta as soon as I saw that Franklin Grove uh, had a nice uh, intense storm over them and all of a sudden it just started spinning like a top and when I got to uh, Malta, the rest was history. I just could not believe what I was seeing. So we're going to take a look at some of the photos you took of the tornado. Okay. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. It's I, oh, sorry. I think a lot of people may want to understand not just what you saw, but we learned after you chased this tornado. Yeah, um, it was very interesting. A lot of people think that, uh, for example, a scene like this can't happen here in DeKalb. And had... Uh, this storm moved just a little bit farther to the right, uh, more to the east instead of to the north. Uh, that thing, which I saw just northwest of Malta, that was my first picture of it right there, would have come barreling into DeKalb. <laughs> Most people just don't realize how fortunate we were. That was the scene in Fairdale literally about uh, two minutes after the tornado had struck. That was coming straight at DeKalb for the first five to ten minutes of the tornado's life. And had it not veered to the north, uh, the uh, tornado invariably would have hit DeKalb and caused a lot more damage and a lot more devastation. So that's what we've learned so far. Wow. So you are the university's official weatherman, we mm -hmm. might say. And so can you tell us how important proper warning is in a tornado, tornado situation? Because we knew in Fairdale there weren't any sirens. Mm -hmm. So, And also, do you see a warning? Like, why did this have to happen the way it did? Well, one thing's for sure, the National Weather Service issued a tornado warning 12 minutes before it hit Franklin Grove, 12 minutes before it hit Ashton, and 31 minutes before it hit uh, Fairdale. And so that tornado right there came with plenty of warning. Another thing is, is that uh, the tornado uh, conditions which formed that day uh, were seen up to four or five days in advance that something big could happen here. So the bottom line is that if you say it came without warning, well, to be honest with you, you really didn't take the time and not much time to learn that, hey, Thursday could be a very, very bad day. And, uh, and uh, obviously and ultimately it was. Well, we always learn something fascinating when you pay a visit to us, Gilbert. Well, thanks thank so much you, for Thank you me. very much for your time. The governor says tornado victims can take their time filing their taxes this year. And lawmakers still want to know what the governor is going to do about state pensions. These are today's state lines. 
Governor Rauner has extended tax return deadlines for residents affected by last week's tornado in parts of DeKalb and Ogle counties. Tornado victims will not have until October 31st to file tax returns. Rauner says the devastated communities should be focusing on recovery instead of deadlines. Some Democratic lawmakers are calling for an analysis of Governor Rauner's plan to overhaul the state's pension system. The Republican governor wants to move state workers to a less generous plan that has been standard for the new hire since 2010. He says it could save Illinois more than $2 billion a year. Four of former Illinois Congressman Aaron Schock's staff members have been ordered to testify before a federal grand jury looking into Schock's spending. The staffers have notified the House Speaker that they've been subpoenaed. Schock quit last month amid questions about his office and campaign expenses. A former Chicago city clerk has pleaded guilty to charges she stole nearly $750,000 in taxpayer money for personal use. Antoinette Chenier stole payments meant for Chicago's emergency management office for more than six years. And those are today's state lines. Boston honors victims of the Marathon bombings on its second anniversary. And some commercial planes may, could be vulnerable to hackers. Here's what's happening in today's World Watch. Today is the second anniversary of the Boston Marathon bombings. Boston Mayor honored the victims by raising an honorary banner near where the bombs exploded. Johar Sanayev was found guilty last week on 30 counts related to the bombings. The penalty phase of the trial will begin on Tuesday. The Government Accounting Office says hundreds of planes flying today could be vulnerable to hackers. Newer planes have their cockpits wired into the same Wi-Fi system used by passengers. A hacker could access avionic systems and put a computer virus into flight control computers, take over the warning or navigation systems, even commandeer the plane. Ten of the 11 Georgia educators who conspired to boost test scores were sentenced to seven years in prison. They were urged to take plea deals. Two of them did, the others refused. A former principal was sentenced at, as a first offender. She was sentenced to a year in jail with four more on probation and 1,000 hours of community service. Today is the deadline to file your 2014 income tax returns. So you've got to file your taxes or file for an extension. Last year, the federal government issued more than $330 billion in tax refunds, with the average refund being about $2,700. And that's today's World Watch. Two big league squads took on teams from Ohio, and NIU baseball and softball go three for three. I'm Brett Tudela for NTC Sports. But first, let's take a look at the big story from today, the verdict at the Aaron Hernandez trial. Let's take a listen. What say you, Madam Four Person? Is the defendant not guilty, guilty of murder in the first degree, or guilty of murder in the second degree? Guilty of murder in the first degree. That was the voice of the foreperson of the jury in the Hernandez trial as he got sentenced. Her Hernandez was charged for the murder of Odin Lloyd, a man who was dating Hernandez's fiancé's sister, and his, Hernandez's fiancé is pictured right there sitting next to his mom, obviously very emotional over the scene and the sentencing there. Lloyd, Old Lloyd's mother was also at the trial and she can be seen crying right here. It's very, a very tough day for everybody involved in this situation. The 25-year-old Hernandez will face life in prison with no parole at a prison that happens to be only three and a half miles away from Gillette Stadium, the New England Patriots home field. Definitely a tough situation for everyone involved, but let's head back to some local baseball. The White Sox are in Cleveland for a two-game series where game one was played last night. Indians manager Terry Francona hoping he could stifle the White Sox offense. First inning, obviously Al Garcia with a base hit up the middle, scoring Melky Cabrera from third. 2-0 Sox early. Jose Quintana was on his game with the nice Uncle Charlie here striking out. Michael Bourne, I don't know why he threw his bat there. He's got, got a little confused. This time Tyler Flowers, a little broken bat. Loop, pass the shortstop, allowing Garcia to score from second with some nice speed there. Fifth inning now, Jose Abreu will step to the plate, turning on this inside fastball, launching it over the left field wall for his solo home run, his second of the year. 4-1 White Sox, the White Sox would go on to win by a final of 4-1. After taking game one in, the ten, in a tenth inning walk-off, the Cubs and the Reds faced off in game two last night. 
already 3 0 Reds when Starlin Castro smacks the ball up the middle. And Anthony Di Sclafani knocks, knocks it down with a behind the back stab, throws him out of first. Eighth inning, Kevin Gregg is up this bomb to Wellington Castillo, who hits it to really nobody out there in the unfi unfinished bleachers. That's kind of ugly out there. But uh, next, uh, next batter would be Chris Coglin, who is struck out by Tony Sangrani. Sangrani would hand the ball off to flamethrower Aroldis Chapman, who will strike out Mike Alt with this 100 mile an hour pitch. Quick local sc scores from NIU baseball and softball. The baseball team extinguished the UIC Flames 11 to four yesterday afternoon. The game was broken open by Johnny Zubek hitting his first career home run with a seventh inning grand slam. Pitcher, pitcher Donovan Sims entered the game in the fourth and came one out short of a six inning save. NIU softball swip, swept a, tin, a twin bill against Valparaiso last, uh, yesterday afternoon. Up in uh, game one, they won 12 to four, and in game two, they won four to two. Baseball will play today against Bradley at home, and then softball will have another doubleheader on Friday at Miami of Ohio. That's all I have for sports. We'll see you next time. When we come back, imagine coming home and finding a set of eyes like these staring at you. We'll explain why people are on alert in LA. You're watching NTC News Tonight. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. A mountain lion discovered Monday afternoon under a Southern California hillside home is back on the move in Los Angeles Griffith Park. Animal control officers had tried luring this mountain lion out from a crawl space under a, a ho house in the Los Feliz neighborhood of Los Angeles. Home security technicians had spotted the animal while installing the equipment. They tried a few tricks to get him out. They shot beanbag rounds and tennis balls and poked him with a stick with no luck. They gave up overnight, only to find the mountain lion had slipped out from under the crawlspace and out into the neighborhood park. I can't even imagine coming home and finding a mountain lion under my house. <laughs> oh boy. NTC News Tonight is produced and directed by students here at Northern Illinois University. We want to thank you all for being with us. Enjoy the rest of your evening and we'll be back on Monday. Goodbye everyone.